Since the end of 2017, beginning of 2018, mental health absence days from Police Scotland has hit a staggering 350,000 days. And this is solely days lost due to staff with mental health issues. The official statistics are published in the latest issue of 1919 magazine, which is Scotland's justice and social affairs publication, which I'll link to in the description. The Scottish Police Federation said the rise demonstrates that stress levels are now critical within the force. Or it could be that you're just hiring people who are not mentally stable. Police Scotland said that it recognised it was a big figure and said the safety and well-being of officers and staff is a priority. Before that of the public. Obviously. Scottish Police Federation Chair David Hamilton said the problem is that the service's response to well-being has been very reactive when what we need to do is to stop problems happening in the first place. Constantly putting plasters on to stop bleeding when we need to prevent the bleeding from starting in the first place. The challenge highlighted in our evidence and in the surveys that we and Police Scotland have carried out is that people are burning out because they are so busy with work, not least dealing with mental health calls that they are not getting a chance to get away from it. It is constant and they are getting to the critical stress level at which people burn out. That is what all the data tells us. Police officers are burning hot and just now and are beginning to fail. Whatever we do is in response. We need to stop the sort of thing happening in the first place and before it needs to be fixed. Anonymous police statements regarding their mental health have also been published with one of them saying, burnout is a real risk. I find myself taking longer and longer to recover from incidents and my mood is often up and down. So then why is this person superior hasn't seen a change in a person's mood and dealt with it is beyond me and puts everybody in danger. Another said the situation hadn't improved in 10 years, whilst another added response policing is the only branch that does not have an option of turning work down and is disproportionately affected by alterations to rest days and difficulty having time off approved. Yeah, try being a fucking chef. Now, I know this isn't the only force to suggest mental health issues is a major problem for them, but again, why isn't there some sort of mental health review taking place internally by an outside agency with the power to send people home or suspend them due to their mental state? Why? With the levels of violence and the aggressive nature we see all too often displayed by police, I would have implemented this years ago. And I sure as shit wouldn't hire people without a face-to-face -face interview with a psychologist in the room too. Because that's what's happening at the moment. And what we get, we've seen, as, as we get what we've seen more recently, police too scared to engage with people and instead going straight for their weapons, leaving people injured or dead, or having a PTSD meltdown and doing the same thing. It seems like it's a problem that can't be solved by police, but the action, isn't, the action needed isn't rocket science. I think this whole them and us narrative the police have doesn't help because police are arriving at scenes already stressed because they have to jump out and appear to take control and dominate a situation by scare cats tactics or by force. And this alone can't be good for anybody's mental health. It's a frightening figure. And I think that when people are arrested and taken to court, the court or the defense needs to ask for a psychological exam done on the arresting officer to see if they're suffering any mental health issues that caused them to act in the way that they did. Because it seems awfully convenient that they rely on that excuse in their misconduct hearings, but courts simply accept their mental state as being perfectly normal when it's the public being prosecuted.